Hi, today I'm going to be reading the book Today I Will Fly by Mo Willems. Um, it's really important for you to take the time to read to your children as much as you can, especially if they're learning English as a second language. It's really basic and I think that some of the things that you need to cover when you start looking at the book with your child is ask them really simple questions like, where do you find the title of the book? And have them point the title out to you. Ask them questions like, well, who is the author of this book? Where would that be? And the author is the person's name at the bottom of the book. You can ask them who the illustrator is and, and, and any other type of questions. The front cover, the back cover of the book. Just so they're familiar with the terminology when we're reading a book. Something that's really important to do is to stop at the beginning of a book and ask them the title, ask them if they can read the title. So today I will fly. You can point out the exclamation point and tell them that means something really big is about to happen. Wow! And really make that kind of a fun expectation for them. You might have them look at the illustration. I'm trying to hold this up so you can see and say, maybe ask them the question, who do you think saying today I will fly? Do you think it's the elephant or do you think it's the pig? And have them predict. That's a really big thing we do in first grade is prediction. So when you open, you always remind them that there's a title page inside every front cover of the book. You're going to find a title page. So you might say, can you find the title page? And then have them turn the first page and find the title page. That's something fun they really enjoy doing. There's always different types of conventions. We call, it's a fancy word for um, the grammar that we use. If you notice how this book is printed, it's a speaking bubble. We can tell it's a speaking bubble because it comes down into a point right here. If there's little circles, we call those thinking bubbles. So that's something you want to say, what kind of, a, is this a speaking bubble or a thinking bubble? So. It starts out, today I will fly. There's so many different ways for you to read to a child. You can have, you read the whole book, which is always probably their favorite. You can have it where you read the page and then they read the page. Or you read one page and they read the opposite page. You can have it where they read the whole book to you. Um, you can read through the page and then maybe point to the word today and then you point to the word that you know they're going to be successful at like I you would say today and then pause and they would say I and then you say will fly and make sure you're reading that exclamation really fun for them so it would look like this today they would say I will fly one that ensures that they're following along and reading the words with you and then they feel like they're a part of it so I read you read take turns reading you read the whole book they read the whole book. We call when you're missing a letter or a word a close activity. So you can have that missing close. So there's just so many different fun ways. And they're all okay. So you can do it whatever way you like. So it would look like this. Today I will fly. And then you might ask them, who is speaking in this page? Do you think the elephant or the pig? And you can have them realize that it's the pig because the speaking bubble is pointing towards the pig. Make sure you have different voices for the different characters because that's what's so fun for them. They love being read to. No, you will not fly today. You will not fly tomorrow. You will not fly next week. And one thing I love about Mo Willems, the author of this book, his characters have the most incredible um, faces um, if you look at the elephant in this page and the, you look at the pig, he's kind of got, the pig has this look of, hmm. So you can stop and ask the, your child, can you infer, and they should know what infer means, that means to kind of get the idea without the words being written, how everybody on the page is feeling. And you can do that with Mo Williams in an amazing way. So another thing is, if you notice on this page, all the font is huge. It's all uppercase letters. You really want to point that out. Why, why do you think the author wrote those like that? And let them, they want you to scream and make this really big. You will never fly. And that's the fun of reading them and pointing that out for them. Um, and then again, in this little fun voice, I will try. Goodbye. And you can just talk about how the illustration has little wind marks behind it because he's often running to go try to fly. 
so much fun. Oh, I love my wings. <laughs> okay, anyway. You will not fly. She will not. Fly, 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 fly. And you can just have fun reading with different voice inflections. Talk about the illustration, talk about the speaking bubbles, the exclamation points. Just um, really have fun reading. I'm not going to read the whole book to you, but really what I want you to do is maybe stop at some point and say, what do you think is going to happen here before you read the page? And they should be able to say, there's a dog. He's going to bite the pig. Well, why do you think he's going to bite the pig? Because his teeth are open and he's jumping toward him. And so you're making predictions and really interacting with the story. Now, I do find that some students love when you stop the story and talk about it. And other students will literally say, stop doing that. Keep reading. So if you have a child who wants you to read the whole story through, you can do the predicting and the teaching first and then read it again all the way through just for the total enjoyment of the book. So you can do it both ways or maybe do one book where you're really practicing the skills and another book where you're just playing with the language and the voices and just, you know, having fun. So take out two Mo Willems books. Do one with information and then one for fun. Okay. Um, I just think this is just such a fun book. It's easy language. It's per perfect for first grade. It's very successful. It's very fun. Um, you can talk about the ending. You can talk about do you think they're really good friends. You can talk about how you're a good friend. Take the book into their life. What would you feel like if you could fly? Where would you fly to? And just, you know, have fun with the whole concept and theme of the book. Talk about have you ever seen a bird fly or learn how to fly? I mean, just make, we call that making connections. There are three kinds of connections you can make. There's text to text. That's from a book to another book. You might compare a fiction book to a nonfiction book about birds flying. You can do, that's called text to text. There's another kind text to world and that might be something like you talk about flying and you talk about maybe a bird you've seen in the world flying or you saw you maybe you observed a little bird learning how to fly or something like that text to world and then there's text to self how would you feel if you could fly where would you fly to so text to text text to, text to self and text to world Another thing that's in every book that you should probably really focus on, um, and it's a real focus in first grade, is on um, retelling the story. Could the child retell you the story? Maybe they use the pictures to kind of go through it. Are they able to retell the story to you? And you might be able to really kind of know, did my child understand this story? It's really very informative for you. So you can say, can you retell me the story? And maybe they do it once with the pictures and once without the pictures. See if they're able to do that. Um, another One last thing when you're going through a book is problem and solution. Most all fiction books at this level, and nearly all books, have a problem and a solution. So you can talk to them about what was the problem? You know, Pig really wanted to fly. Was he able to do it? And did it get solved? Was he able to, to solve it? And I won't tell you the ending of the story because I want you to read it with your child. So um, you can talk about problem solution, text to text, and also make some predictions about what might happen tomorrow with Pig. So just some ideas about how to read a book, have fun, and read every night. And you can always blame Mrs. Van Gorp and say she makes you read 30 minutes a night. Set the timer and make it fun, but they have to practice. It's so important that they have fun with you and that they experience books in a really delightful, fun way every day.